Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud 2022. I am here in my welcome screen. And if you wanted to skip some of your preferences, you could jump right in to take an interactive tour. However, this video is not about that. So if you wanted to take the interactive tour, do that on your own time. This video is about setting up the program to work most efficiently for you in this class. So what I'm gonna do, since I am teaching on a Mac, I would go to Illustrator menu, Preferences. If you are on a PC, that would be Edit menu and Preferences somewhere down near the bottom. But again, since I'm on a Mac, I'll go to Illustrator, Preferences or Command K on a Mac. That would be Control K on a PC to bring up your Preferences. Now most of the preferences are default settings, so most of them I'm not going to have to change, but I am going to talk about the ones that will affect your work in this class, the ones that I recommend you set up, either turn on or disable. So that's what this video is all about. Okay, so right up here, keyboard increments, constraining angles, I'm just going to leave that all at its default doesn't really affect you too much. Keyboard increments is like when you select something and you hit your arrow key to nudge the object across the screen. It'll nudge it at a very short distance, which is good for precise measurements. Um, do not disable the auto add and delete. That is a function associated with the pen tool. So I want to leave that turned off. I do not want to disable that. Precise cursors, I don't recommend using them. If you want to use them, and I'll show you that in another video, you would turn on your caps lock key. I don't turn it on automatically. I can turn it on and off by using my caps lock key. If I had my pen tool, I would see my pen tool on the screen, but if I used precise cursors, if I turned on my caps lock key, my pen tool would look like a big X. Okay, so that's what precise curse is. It's an X like a target. I turn that on and off when I need it by using my caps lock key. You do want to show tool tips. Those are little yellow bars that will pop up as little indicators or help icons to help describe what you're looking at. Show or hide the rulers. You can just do that by hitting command R for rulers or control R on a PC. Anti-alias artwork, keep that on. Um, select the same tint. I don't really use that much. I don't do a lot of tinted colors or even when I do, I don't need to select all of them. So I leave that turned off. Show the home screen when no documents are open. That was this big home screen or the welcome screen. You can call it either one. If you're new to Illustrator, you don't really need legacy new interface. Legacy means older version. So we'll just use the newest version of it. Uh, let's see, preview bounds, I'll leave that turned off. Display, keep that as its default. Add, converted, append converted upon opening legacy files. Well, I do use older legacy files when working with this new version of Illustrator, so I'll leave that turned on. If you don't have the right video card, like in my case, I don't have the fully updated video card. Show me system compatibility issues when I start up uh, Adobe Illustrator. When you're working in an Illustrator file, you might accidentally double click and that turns on something called isolation mode. So I highly recommend you turn that off. It gets more confusing than anything to new users of Illustrator, so don't turn on your isolation mode, just turn that off. I'm not gonna use Japanese crop marks. I don't even know what those are. Um, in the future, if you're using patterns, definitely you wanna transform your pattern tiles when you're shrinking or expanding objects that are filled with patterns or rotating objects filled with patterns. You absolutely wanna scale your corners. And most importantly, scale strokes and effects. Absolutely turn this one on. If you don't and you shrink artwork or expand artwork, your stroke will not change 
and it will really screw it up. So if you have a stroke and you blow something up, you want your stroke to blow up with it. Scale your strokes. Okay, content aware defaults. I think that's a new feature in Illustrator, but I haven't used it yet. So I'm just gonna keep it turned on. I've used content aware in Photoshop, works great. So I figure it's probably something I want in Illustrator. Honor the scale on PDF import. Let's turn that on because you might be working with different scales. I don't use the mouse wheel when I zoom in and out. If you're using a trackpad on your laptop or whatever, you could use the uh, gesture. I have a desktop, so that doesn't really matter anyway, so I'll just keep it on. Then I come up here to selection and anchor display. Now all of these buttons, looks like a big mess, but there's only a few I'm gonna look at. Okay, select and unlock objects on canvas. Well, if I, if I have an object locked, I don't want to just accidentally click on it and unlock it. I'll unlock it when I need to unlock it. So I keep that turned off. Show anchor points in selection tool. Absolutely. I want to see where my anchor points exist on the objects or shapes that I'm creating on the page. Constrain path dragging. I don't really use reshape, so I don't bother with that. Move locked and hidden artwork with your artboard. Turn that on. If you go to move an artboard and there's a piece of artwork that's locked, it might leave that locked artwork behind and it won't even sit on your page anymore. So I do move locked and hidden artwork that was part of an artboard. Illustrator calls pages artboards. Uh, you don't want to select objects only by clicking on the very edge, so I leave that turned off. Command click to select objects behind other objects. That's a good function. You probably won't use it that much, but if you remember it, it's good to have. Adobe InDesign works this way. And I'll zoom in on my selected objects. Sure, why not? Highlight, show me my anchor points when I move my mouse over them. Yes, I want to do that. I don't necessarily want to edit um, the curvature of my anchor point, so I don't show the handles on multiple points. Um, hide the corner widget, that's good if the angle is bigger than that. But the main one I want to turn off is this feature called rubber band. The rubber band shows you a stretchy, kind of bendable rubber line that is supposed to show you what your curves are going to look like before you even draw them, and it doesn't work Illustrator worked just fine for the first two decades without these features. So I'm gonna turn off the rubber band for the pen tool and the curvature tool. It's just gonna get in your way. For type, these are all your default settings right here. Type object, selection by path only. You do not want to do that only by clicking on the edges or the baseline of your type. So leave that turned off. Show my font names in English. Sounds like something I definitely need. Um, automatically size new area type. I'm going to turn that one on. Area type is when you type inside of a shape or inside of an area. Enable in menu font previews. Yes, that takes the guesswork out of picking your fonts. Uh, show me the last 10 fonts that I use. That's good. Enable missing glyph protection. I'll turn that on. It's, I don't think I'm ever going to use it, but it's a default anyway, so might as well keep it. Highlight substituted fonts. That's good. Fill new type with placeholder text. Placeholder text is like Latin text. Turn that off. That means every time you take your type tool and you click on the page, it's going to show you Latin text, and you don't need that. You're not going to read that stuff anyway. Okay, show character alternates. I'll turn that off as well. Just little indicators that just get in my way. When it comes to units of measurement, general measurements like the size of a rectangle or the size of a circle should always be set to inches. Strokes or outlines are always measured in point values. Type is always measured in point values as well. Identify objects by the object name. That's good enough. 
under guides. Light cyan guides are very hard to see on your screen. So you want to set them to red guides. Very easy to see. Okay, I set up my guides as lines, solid lined guides, not dotted lines. Because again, that gets a little harder to see. So keep it on lines. When it comes to the grid, I don't use that as part of my class. It's just a way to lay down kind of a non-printable grid over your artboard or page if you want to line things up. Light gray on a white sheet of paper is going to be very hard to see. So I'd probably use a lighter color or light color like light blue if you even need a grid. I won't be talking about them, but I usually change those default colors to something that's a little more visible. We will be using smart guides. I recommend, again, you set your smart guides to a dark color that is easily readable on the screen. We won't typically be using glyph guides, but if you ever needed them for some reason, set them to a color that's a little darker than bright green. And for now, I'm gonna keep these all in their defaults. I would recommend you turn a few of these off when you use smart guides, but I'm gonna leave this for now until we get to my lecture on smart guides. These are all your defaults, so just leave them be. We're not gonna be doing slices in this class. Slices is the way you can uh, slice up the design of a artboard if you're working on something like a web page. We're not gonna be doing a bunch of text, so there's nothing we need to change for hyphenated words or adding new words to our Adobe Illustrator dictionary. Plugins are additional filters and features that third-party software developers can create, like new tools that you can add to the functionality of Illustrator. Um, I'm not gonna add any of that stuff. Scratch disk is the disk space where Illustrator gets the memory to run the program. So your startup is your hard drive. So you leave that alone as well. Under your user face, that is the darkness of the workspace. So I want to keep it on its default setting right there. I don't automatically collapse my panels. I'll close them when I need to close them. I don't let Illustrator do that stuff for me. Open documents as tabs. You'll see a list of little Rolodex like file tabs up here. If you have three or four Illustrator files open at the same time, it'll make them a little larger so they're easier to read. User interface UI is the interface that you're seeing right here. We'll just keep it small. Otherwise, if you go big, you can see it's just gonna expand the size of things on your screen. So if you're a little hard of seeing, you wanna go large or medium, but the default is small, so I'll keep it at small. And again, as you're changing the way things look on your screen, notice those changes will take effect the next time you start Illustrator. So if you are changing any of this, like user interface, you have to quit Illustrator, restart it, and then you'll see those changes. Okay, performance is the amount of memory dedicated to the Illustrator application. Uh, GPU performance is the way your graphics card can help you to zoom in and out. And again, I have an outdated graphics card, so I can't use animated zoom. I'll just zoom in and out the old-fashioned way. But you might have that enabled on your more recent computers, which is fine. I can get by just fine without it. Uh, file handling. These are all your default settings. But what I would look at, the nice thing about Illustrator is it automatically saves recovery data in case your computer crashed. You'll lose about two minutes worth of work and that's about it. It has an auto save, which is kind of cool. This one says, turn off that feature for complex documents. I don't wanna do that. Again, that's not gonna happen until I restart my computer, but if I'm working on a big file, I don't wanna lose a ton of work, so I'll turn that off. Save my files in the background. If it's a big file, I can continue working while Illustrator is saving. Same thing here, it's gonna export files while I'm working automatically save cloud documents every five minutes if you're working on the uh, 
cloud saving file system. I don't use that, so I'll just keep it turned on anyway. Uh, down here, let's see, use low resolution proxy. No, I don't want to show a low resolution version of my linked files. Show me the Show me them the way they're meant to be looked at. Display bitmaps as, as anti-aliased images. Absolutely. Auto activate Adobe fonts. Yes. Under clipboard handling, leave this alone. These are your default settings. Appearance of black, leave these alone. These are your default settings as well. Usually, if you're a graphic designer, you should know the difference between 100% black ink and rich black. There is a difference. In the print world, 100% black ink doesn't actually show up as 100% black. Shows up as like a 96% gray. But here in Illustrator, since we're going to be doing all digital work, we'll show your blacks as rich black. And devices, if you're using a Wacom tablet, enable that. So that's a quick rundown of your Illustrator preferences. I'll click OK. And remember, if you made any significant changes there, quit Illustrator and restart it. Then those changes will take place. And then you will be ready to go. So the other thing I want to um, mention really quick is your workspace. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, now that I've set up my preferences, I'm going to go to Window Menu, Workspace, and you'll notice you have two of them, Essentials and Essentials Classic. Okay, the difference between these two, Essentials is for those who have used Illustrator for years. This is like a stripped down version of your workspace. It kind of takes for granted that you know where things are. Okay, it doesn't show you everything on your screen. You have to go find it. I would recommend, and I still use this to this day, Essentials Classic. That puts all your robust features right on your screen. So I'm going to click that one. And I get all my panels popping up from the last time I used Illustrator. So what I recommend is once you choose Essentials Classic, go to Window Menu again, Workspace again, and Reset Essentials Classic. That's going to put all your panels back where they belong. Now, we're not working on Creative Cloud, and we're not going to take advantage of our Creative Cloud libraries. You're also coming into this class as a brand new student for the most part. So I don't know what your work experience is. I don't know if you've used Illustrator for years or if you are brand new to it. So I'm going to teach this as if you are brand new to Illustrator. Okay, this properties panel, you want to use that if you have used Illustrator for years. Okay, I'm not going to take it for granted that you know what's going on here. So right up here, this little double arrowhead. I'm going to click that, collapse those two panels. I want to expand these panels by clicking right up here. Okay, there we go. Now my workspace is set up. If they're a little bit wide, I can try to squeeze them. You can't on my screen because this is about as thin as they're going to go. But I don't need every single panel showing here. So what I typically do is I tear out my layers panel and I tear out my stroke panel. You could see when I tore them out, they became a lot smaller. So that's good. It's more manageable. I will bring up the other panels when I need them. So right up here, I can click the double arrowhead and collapse them to icon view. Or I could just try to bring these out a little bit so I at least know the names. Again, icon view is for those who've used Illustrator for years. You know this is your swatches. You know this is your uh, gradient panel or your appearance or transparency. See, I didn't even know that one. Um, 
So you don't want these to necessarily be an icon view. So you can hover right on this edge and just pull that out a little bit. That way it's not eating up a lot of your screen. But when you need swatches, you can click on it. When you don't need it, you click it again. Okay, that's the best way to manage your screen space right here. So now that I've set up my uh, preferences, now that I've set up my workspace, I'm ready to go. Welcome to Adobe Illustrator.